Now, if I've got myself a set of P790s of old in the bag right now, there's only one question on my mind, and that's how do they compare to the P790s of 2019? And that's exactly what we're going to find out today here at Full Rochester. Yeah, P790s 2019, literally just released. If you haven't already, then please check out my uh, full review of that club, which was done in terms of dry ball data here at Ford Goldchester and out on the golf course down at Conway. But the question I was asking myself whilst I was testing that club is, I thought it was a fantastic iron. But what I really wanted to do was compare it to the P790s of old and see if we can identify the differences, what have TaylorMade achieved in this enhanced version of this P719, uh, P790 of 2019. So what we're going to do, dry ball data, I've got 9 iron, 7 iron, 5 iron. There's exactly the same shaft in both of these. We're going to start off by hitting some golf balls and then I'm going to look to try and identify what are the differences if any, that TaylorMade have managed to achieve in this P790 2019. Right, before we start hitting some golf balls, let's talk about what the differences are in between these uh, new and old set of P790s. And one of them is the look. So I'll throw some images up on screen now. The details are, I think, minor in terms of what they've done in terms of the looks. There's a lot more chrome in the new version. Uh, the logo on the back of the club is slightly different. Um, it is what I would call, like I said, minor changes. But for me, I do think it's an improvement. I am a sucker for a bit of shiny chrome, but I do think the P790 2019 does look a little bit better when it's sitting there in your bag. But that means very little, as we know. And that's a very personal opinion as well. Maybe more importantly, what they've changed is that address. Uh, less offset on the 2019 version. I think that'll uh, appeal to a lot of golfers out there. And again, whether or not you can pick that up, it's minor, but there is a difference there. And the other thing is, is the top liner address. Um, slightly slimmer, narrower version on the new 2019 club. And I think they've just simply achieved that by chamfering off that top line. And I think that's one of the things they've done very well in terms of the overall aesthetics of the club as well, is that they've thinned elements down. Maybe the whole bulk and mass isn't that much different sat behind the ball, but visually, they've done these sort of clever little elements of chamfering off, changing the colour and shade of the material, which just gives that visual uh, that it appears to be just that little bit smaller, uh, or thinner in that case. And again, overall profile of the club, very, very little difference at all other than those two things. Anyway, that's it. That's all that separates them in terms of looks. What I'm interested in, I'm going to start off, is hitting the nine iron, and I'm going to tell you my immediate feedback after I switch between the two. Okay, so that's the last ball with the nine iron and that's the new one I've finished up with. Um, collected data and hit plenty of balls with both of them. At this stage, nothing majorly different that I'm noticing and I'm trying not to get drawn into, I don't want to start looking and analysing data just yet, but on the base of what I'm seeing, no major difference in the nine iron. So on to seven iron. Right, once again, I'll finish up there. Uh, 
plenty of balls hit with seven iron on both clubs. That's the last one with, again, the 2019 version. Um, slightly, I mean, the one thing that I didn't mention on the nine iron, I certainly felt it more so in the seven iron. I'm not seeing, again, any, I've not looked at data, but I'm not seeing anything fantastic in terms of what I'm seeing, at least out there. They seem to be performing, again, with a lot of similarities. Um, maybe, just maybe, a slightly higher ball flight on the seven iron, but I'll stand corrected if that's wrong. Um, but definitely the feel is a big difference. Slightly different acoustics inside here, but there's a noticeable difference in sound and ultimately uh, feel in what I'm hitting so far. But in terms of performance, not seeing anything major as yet. So last one, I'm gonna step into the five iron, see if there's any differences there. Well, that's the last one of the five iron, and that is right down the target line. And to be fair, one thing I will say is I've hit both clubs reasonably well. I'm more than happy with the swings I put on this morning. I think it's been uh, fair in terms of uh, what each club had in terms of the swings from the average golfer. Uh, this is the first iron where I've seen a difference, and I hope this is backed up in terms of data, um, because I said it out there on the course when we reviewed the P790s um, 2019, that for me, one of the things they claim to have done, Taylor made, is move the tungsten weighting um, quite a significant amount in terms of where it was in the longer irons because there was an issue and I can vouch for the issue in that I had the uh, 654 iron of P790 of old in my bag and whilst it was a great powerful ball flight, very, very strong, the launch angle was often quite low. So stopping into greens would become an issue because of that low flat ball flight. And one thing they tried to achieve in this new P790, particularly in the longer irons was, uh, like I said, move around that tungsten weighting, move that CG and help with launch. And I think we are gonna see, I can't see how we're not gonna see any difference in here by where the ball is definitely launching higher. The question mark is how much impact that has. Is it a negative impact in terms of overall performance? And we'll, we'll see when we analyze the data. But that's the first difference. And without doubt, through the three clubs, the one thing I will say is the feel is significantly different. Now, for some people, that's not a major deal. But for me, it's a massive tick in the box for the 2019 version. Let's hit one more before we go. Right, I don't think there's much more to say. I think we're gonna have a look at data and I'll give you my overall opinion on how these two clubs differ. Is there a winner or loser? And should you people with P790s currently in the bag be thinking about changing? Right, okay, so it's back inside and have a quick look through the numbers and give you what is gonna be a fairly brief assessment to be honest with you, like I said throughout the video and when I talk about my course. Not massive difference, certainly seeing that within the looks, there's certainly tweaks. Uh, I'm going to throw up, first of all, the spread of all the shots that I hit. Now again, very much the performance of an average golfer, some left, some right, and um, the odd one down the middle. Uh, overall, happy with the way I struck the ball, that's pretty much as consistent as it gets for me, like I said, at my level. We're going to start off by going straight into the data at the 9-9, and if you remember what I said with 9-9, at this stage, not seeing anything noticeable on the eye at least but when you get down to the numbers there were certainly some improvements in there and if you take a look first of all once again club head speed very very similar however a slightly uh, better ball speed which is always a positive suggests maybe just a little bit uh, better performance across the club face because there's no way each of those strikes will be coming out the middle um, spin number far more impressive with the new version carry distance identical uh, However, launching, um, again, slightly lower, uh, but and peak height, almost identical. So, the only thing I would say in there very briefly about the 9-9, like I said, what I've seen on the course and in 4Golf was that there was nothing visible, far better spin number, and again, I think that's an improvement that we'd all like to see with that 9. It's certainly better 
than what I was achieving with that older version at 6D, which would be arguably certainly on that low side. But from there, let's slip into the 7 iron and see what the numbers look like for the 7 iron. Right, okay, so once again, first thing I'm on note is club head speed consistent, almost identical again for both. Slightly better ball speed once again seen on the 7 iron. Uh, spin number almost identical, carry distance almost identical. Launch angle slightly different, 17.3, uh, and I think if you analyze across the numbers, obviously with an average, it suggests it was slightly higher, but you can certainly see that. And with peak height again, again going across the numbers, there was that different, slightly different ball flight. Um, but once again, I think we're not seeing anything majorly different in the lower end of the bag. So for me, yeah, spin number is an improvement, but still, overall performance not greatly different but then for me this is the interesting bit i don't have six iron i don't have four iron but we did have five iron and this is where out on the course it was certainly a noticeable difference and one of the things with this changing and maneuvering of tungsten weighting suggests higher ball flight still maintaining spin uh, and ultimately those distances that we're looking for but there was without doubt a difference in ball flight and launch angle. And here come the numbers on the five iron. Okay, so numbers in front of you now, and once again, arguably with this, I was achieving a slightly better club head speed, swinging it that little bit faster with the uh, with the 790 uh, 2019 version. So that would arguably be where we'd see the better ball speeds and 128.7 as opposed to 126. But like I said, offset that against the club head speed. Spin rate, again, uh, was far better with and and when i say far better 300 revs um but a couple dropping out into 3000 it, there's not a great deal between them but what's interesting for me carry distance carrying extra seven yards uh however spinning um higher but again once again launch angle and just look at the final column in terms of peak height on average and i think that's where Ultimately, like I said, it's quite nice to always see the sort of data back up what you see out there on the golf course because I love on course testing, but I think you always need the data to back up what you're seeing. Otherwise, um, it can be uh, a, a, a different way in which you're delivering the club. But with, with dry ball data across a cross section of shots, at least you start to see some consistencies and can start to identify if that is the case. And without doubt, like I said, seeing that out in the range, uh, it's a better ball flight in the longer iron, in the five iron, without doubt, whether that translates into four and six, you'd assume it does. And I think that's the major difference uh, in terms of the tungsten weighting. And one of the issues, perhaps, like I said, I mentioned in the previous video, I had the longer irons in the P790 original version. And whilst they were very powerful and strong ball flight, it was flat. And I think that's a massive tweak they've made uh, and a noticeable tweak they've made in these longer irons. Overall assessment is this. The P790 uh, new version is marginally better than the older version. And the margins, I wouldn't suggest they're going to take you from if you own P790s of old. I don't think you're going to switch to the new version. But without doubt, with the, when you throw the feel into the new version, which is again a massive enhancement for me, the feel and sound is massively different. Aesthetics is personal. There's without doubt what they've said, they've achieved, they, they, they were looking to achieve, they have done. Uh, and that 719 new version is without doubt marginally better. But whether it's enough to part with your dough is another matter. But what I will say is if you're looking at new irons right now, do not ignore the P790s 2019 because they're a top, top set of irons. And like I said in a previous video when I tested them on my own, certainly are on their own. Certainly one of the top three irons that I have tested of 2019 so far. Anyway, I think that's it. You've got enough data as uh, maybe go back and pause and analyze that data for those of you who like to do that kind of thing. Uh, for the rest of you, comments down below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was useful in terms of what I fed back as ever as honest and as straightforward as I can make them. Uh, thank you for watching. Thumbs up, comments down below. I'll see you soon.